I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'd like to share with you a quick update to Rebel 6.1.8. Rebel now features new brush cursor modes that allow you to better visualize the size, shape, and angle of your brushes. This is an essential feature for any digital art app, especially so if you use the tilt or rotation expressions for flat brushes. I'm really happy to see it has been added to Rebel. Let's take a look at how to use this new feature. There are two ways to change the brush cursor per brush or globally. To do it per brush, look in the window menu for the brush creator. In the paint section, you'll find the option for cursor. Cursor mode can be set to circle, rectangle, shape, or auto. Auto will select the best option for each brush, and in many cases it works well. So even if you have a lot of custom brushes, you might not need to change most of them. I'll select the default fat bristle brush found in the oils acrylics category. By clicking with my mouse several times, I can build up a dab. This brush has a lot of negative space in it, its dab is flat, and the dab can be stretched when using tilt. When I make a test stroke using tilt to make a variety of marks, you can see how intuitive this cursor feels. Even before making a mark, I can preview the shape I'm going to get. To give you a practical example of how this is useful, I'll paint a quick tree using the fan variant found in the dabber category. I'll lay down the darker shadow color first. I can easily angle the brush using tilt to help me visualize the direction the branches will flow. Next, I can select a lighter highlight color and get an idea of where the highlights will need to be aligned before I touch the brush to the canvas. If I tried to do this with the classic circle mode, it would be a lot more difficult. I'd need to use a lot of undos to get it aligned correctly. As you can tell, the outline of the brush cursor does not precisely match the shape of the brush. Pressure, grain, and other factors also control the appearance of the strokes and dabs and are not reflected in the cursor. You can use the threshold setting to expand or contract the edge of the brush cursor to fine tune it. For this brush, there isn't a whole lot of difference because the dab doesn't have many semi-opaque pixels. I'll choose the shred variant found in grunge. This one has sort of a thick edge with the middle of the dab being sort of hollow or making less contact with the canvas. So by adjusting the threshold, I can either show just the sharp edge or a fuller shape that encompasses more of the semi-opaque pixels. Next, let's select the flat variant in the flat category. This brush is using the rectangle dab, but let's change the cursor mode from auto to circle. This is the classic mode that approximates the brush size and shows a line to indicate the angle of the dab. That's assuming you have it set up this way in the tool's preferences. Using this feedback to preview the brush angle is certainly better than nothing, but it leaves you guessing at the brush shape. Let's change it to rectangle. Now I can see the angle of the brush and the approximate shape of the dab. This is much more intuitive and accurate. If I paint some bricks, I can easily align them. Again, precise alignments like this are very difficult using the classic circle mode. I can try the shape mode, but I will get basically a rectangle anyway, so I may as well just use rectangle. This will be the case for circular brushes as well, such as round soft. Choosing shape could be useful to show that the brush has jagged rather than smooth edges, but circle works well enough. Here's how I ended up customizing my cursors. Auto did a pretty good job for most brushes, so I only changed the ones that needed a different mode. Any round brushes that aren't heavily textured can just remain as a circle. Any flat brushes that aren't heavily textured, asymmetrical, or oddly shaped can be a rectangle. For example, I could make the fan brush a rectangle since it's flat, but then I lose my bearing on which direction the leaves are pointed. For brushes that have very distinct shapes or a lot of texture, then shape is usually the way to go. Watercolor star is a good example. Any polygonal shapes like triangles or complex shapes like splats can benefit from the shape mode. I'll also mention that I prefer to use the Wacom Art Pen, which can use rotation rather than tilt to angle the brush cursor. You'll need to look in the brush creator under shape and grain and swap pen tilt for pen rotation for this to work. Now it's much easier to rotate these dabs. Some brushes may work better with tilt, so try both and see which one you prefer. The art pen can utilize both rotation and tilt. In order to permanently apply these cursor and rotation settings to each brush, you'll need to overwrite the current brush settings using the Save Changes as Default button for each variant. I have updated the brushes in my Dropbox to show the optimal brush cursors. 
If you are a member, you can download those if you like. Go to aaronrutten.com join to sign up or visit the members only page if you are already a member. To edit the brush cursor globally and override the individual brush settings, go to Edit Preferences Tools. Here you can choose to always use one of the four modes. With this enabled, when I switch between brushes, I always get the same cursor. I prefer to show a different cursor for each brush, so I will disable this. That's all for this tutorial. This update will make painting in Rebel feel much more accurate and intuitive, so I highly recommend installing it. If you would like to watch more of my Rebel tutorials, subscribe to my channel now. Thanks for watching.